Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Sam Smith and today we are going to be doing an overview and strategy guide for Pixar's Syndrome in the new Disney Villainous Expandalone, Bigger and Badder. Now to win the game, Syndrome must be at the same location as Omnidroid V10. And while at that location, you're going to have to activate Syndrome's remote. And while doing that, you also have to have no heroes in your realm, and then you have won the game. But in order to actually get to that point, you're going to have to start off by building up your Omnidroid, starting with Omnidroid V8, and then getting all the way up to 10. And in order to do that, you'll actually have to use these Omnidroids to vanquish heroes within your realm, removing them from your board to the discard pile, and then you're gonna have to build new ones using major modification cards. Now, removing these major modification cards is a free action that you can do at any time during your turn, and this does not cost any power to play, and it also does not use up a play a card action. Now, just a few quick notes on all of the Omnidroids. As long as they are on the bottom side of your realm, you can actually use a move item or ally action in order to move them to an adjacent location in your realm, just like you would do an ally or item. Now, you can also use these in a vanquish action. This is the main way to get them vanquished and removed from your realm in order to build up the next one using those major modifications. And another piece of the puzzle is Syndrome's remote. And just like in Disney and Pixar's The Incredibles, the remote Syndrome uses to control Omnidroid V10 can be bounced around between heroes. When a hero is played to Syndrome's realm, the remote, if already in play, will attach to that hero, and Omnidroid V10 moves to the bottom of Syndrome's realm in that same location. When the hero who has Syndrome's remote is defeated, move the remote back to the bottom of Syndrome's realm, and move Omnidroid V10 back to the top. This thematically is a blast, but it's also a really interesting and intriguing puzzle. Now today we're going to be looking through Syndrome's cards, the four locations in his realm, as well as I'm going to give three tips and strategies to play this character a bit better for your first couple games. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. So we're going to be looking at Syndrome's allies, and he's actually got quite a few allies coming in the form of security, guards, and the Velocipod Patrol. Now you've got multiple copies of each of these in your deck, but each of them is going to basically have the same purpose in your realm to defeat heroes and make sure that there's none of them in your realm for your end goal as Syndrome. Now the other purpose is to actually just get them in your realm. And this is actually a really good strategy to remove them from your deck cycling and make getting to those cards that you want quicker if you ever have to reshuffle. Remember, when they're on your realm, they're not in your discard pile. That means that you don't actually have to go through them again when you have to reshuffle. So this can give incentive to play them even if you don't have immediate use for them in your realm. Now, as I was saying, they come in three forms. Security is going to be only one power and they have two strength, but they don't have any additional ability. And then you've got guards, which are two power, one strength, but guards get plus one strength for each other ally at their location. So they can kind of ramp up strength really quickly. And then we've got the Lossipod Patrol, which is two power, three strength, and when performing a vanquish action, they are actually able to be used to defeat a hero at their location or at an adjacent location. And the only note here I would add is that you definitely want to play them at the two central locations in your realm, Nomasan Island and Syndrome's Lair, because you're actually going to have more opportunities to vanquish those heroes at those two locations. Now, there is only one other ally in Syndrome's deck, and that is going to be Mirage. Now, she is three power, two strength, and her ability is that when Mirage is played, reveal cards from the top of Syndrome's fate deck until you reveal a hero. Play that hero to Mirage's location and discard the rest. Now, Mirage is extremely powerful because she is one of the few cards that can actually get heroes and put them into your realm all by yourself without your opponent's fading you. And this is important because that's the only way that you can actually remove Omnidroids by defeating heroes with them. So one of the notes that I have here is that this is only a win played ability. So as soon as possible, you're going to want to actually use Mirage 
to defeat heroes so that she can join back up in the deck cycle and you can redraw her later and use her ability again. Next up is Syndrome's items, starting with major modifications. Now, you have four copies of these in your deck, and that's the exact number that you're going to need in order to build up these Omnidroids in your realm. Omnidroid VX9 takes one major modification to build, and Omnidroid V10 takes three major modifications to build. So this should show you that it is extremely important for you not to lose these. And there is a very detrimental fate card that can remove all of them from your realm at once called That Was Totally Wicked. Zero Point Energy is a three power cost item card that says that when Zero Point Energy is played, attach it to a hero. That hero gets negative two strength and cannot be moved. Now this is just a helpful tool in order to ensure that you're able to defeat a hero in your realm. It has no other real purpose. But one thing about this is that you can always build up your allies and if you've been kind of playing them like I've been saying, then you probably won't ever need this and that will save you quite a bit of power. Now moving on to Syndrome's effect cards, we have got Identification Please, which is a two power cost effect card saying to move an ally or an Omnidroid to any location with a hero. Now you only have two copies of this in your deck, and I would say definitely put preference on moving your Omnidroids with this, as that's going to put you right up against a hero, and then you can use them to vanquish that hero hopefully, removing them from the board, and then on to the next Omnidroid. And then we've got the four power cost containment unit. This says to choose a hero in your realm, that hero loses strength equal to their current strength, essentially bringing their strength down to zero. Now this is going to wipe any previous effects affecting that targeted hero. So if the hero already had plus two or some strength, you're just gonna still bring them down all the way to zero. This is really strong in the fact that you can just defeat these heroes very easily, but this is at a high power cost, so you're going to want to be careful when using it. There is a lot of conditions in this deck, more than any other villain in the game currently. Starting off with Who's Super Now, this says that during your turn, if another player takes a play a card action, you may play Who's Super Now. Gain power equal to the cost of the card played by your opponent. This can be a way to grab some crazy power depending on which villain you're going up against. I've seen some crazy situations where Syndrome has two of these in his hand and he's able to play them both and gain like five or 10 power in one turn. This can bring in an insane amount of power. But I wouldn't have this one as super high on my priority of keeping in my hand waiting to be used because you can gain power throughout your realm in other ways. And then we've got Bioprobe. You've got two of these in your deck and it says that during their turn, if another player defeats a hero, you may play Bioprobe, defeat a hero of equal or lesser strength than one defeated by your opponent. This is a really good card, especially when you get to the point of your game where you're just trying to remove heroes from your realm. So definitely one that I would keep around, but definitely don't keep onto it if you're going up against an opponent that doesn't do that much vanquishing. And then we've got three copies of Not a Sidekick. This says that during their turn, if another player discards one or more cards, you may play Not a Sidekick. Draw cards from your villain deck equal to the number of cards discarded. This is an extremely powerful powerful condition. I would keep this in my hand because a lot of players are going to end up discarding cards pretty quickly and this just gives you a huge opportunity to get a lot of cards within your hand. And you can use multiple of these getting up to hands of 10 or more. I mean, you can have a lot of cards in your hand at one time, which gives you a ton of options. Or if you have no options, you can always go to a discard action and just dump them all and you've gone through a ton of your deck right there. And now we've got 15 years later that says during their turn, if another player gains any power, you may play 15 years later. Reveal fate cards until you reveal a hero. Play that hero to any location in your realm. That hero gets negative two strength. Discard the rest. 
This is an extremely powerful condition card, and besides Mirage, this is the only way that you can force heroes into your realm if your opponent is refusing to fate you. Now, you need heroes in your realm to win, so 15 laters should never really be discarded. And it will be easily used because no foe can refuse power. And another added note, this can be any form of gaining power, it doesn't just have to be gaining power from a gain power action icon on your opponent's board. It could be with a card ability, just any time that opponent would gain any form of power. Now just taking a quick look at all of Syndrome's realm, he's got Par Residence, No Menacen Island, Syndrome's Lair, and Downtown Metroville. Now, just right off the bat, you're gonna look at downtown Metroville. This is going to be a really good location because this has got your three power icon, a play a card, a discard, and a fate ability. All of these are very important to Syndrome's goals. But I also want you to note that both Syndrome's Lair and No Manasan Island have the ability to play two cards on one turn, which is a pretty rare thing to actually have in your realm. Usually you only have one location that's able to do this. Out of these two, seeing as heroes are gonna be piling up in your realm anyways, Syndrome's Lair can be really helpful because you're gonna be able to maneuver your Omnidroids and allies with that move item or ally action at the bottom there. And then just another thing to keep in mind, you've got your only bottom Vanquish action at the Par Residence, and this is going to be important for actually getting your Omnidroids removed. So since you're gonna to have to do a lot of Vanquishing, keeping this location clear might be good if you also want to be fading your opponent while doing so. All in all, the best two locations, in my opinion, for this hero is going to be Syndrome's Lair and Downtown Metroville, and the more weaker location would be the Nomanasan Island. And now I'm going to give you three tips and strategies to actually play Syndrome better. Now, Syndrome is a character that really needs to be vanquishing a lot. You need to be doing it whenever you can and as often as you can. There's a couple of reasons for this, and one of the main reasons is that this keeps your fate deck pretty thin thick because you do not want to get that was totally wicked and have to remove all of your major modifications. So keeping those heroes removed and back into the fate deck is going to fill up your fate deck, meaning that you're going to be getting those annoying fate cards less often and you're going to be keeping your realm clear. So always be vanquishing as Syndrome. Now with most villains that need specific cards out of their fate deck, you actually want your opponents to fate you. However, with Syndrome, I think this might be the case where I actually don't want that because you can always use 15 years later or Mirage in order to go through your deck, grabbing a hero, playing it into your realm and discarding the other non heroes. And that is going to actually be a lot better because you're going to have the information on what's already been played and you're going to be getting heroes into your realm. So instead of taunting your opponent to fate you with Syndrome, it might not be a good idea with Syndrome, but you know, I mean, more heroes at the end of the day is going to be helpful. So. It just depends, but always focus on trying to play 15 years later and Mirage as opposed to expecting your opponents to fate you because they may not fate you once the entire game. That'd be unwise, but it's always possible. Now, a common trap and something that you have to be weary of is that when you are actually defeating Omnidroid V10 using that remote, Omnidroid V10 is going to be flipping to Omnidroid V10 destroyed. This is actually going to stay in your realm at the top of your board for the rest of the game. And so planning out where this ends up is going to be very important for you. For example, if you have the opportunity to activate Omnidroid V10 and you are at downtown Metroville, and you're not about to win because there's still a lot of heroes in your realm, I would not activate Omnidroid V10 at that location. The best location to flip Omnidroid V10 would be the Par Residence and stay away from ever flipping it at Syndrome's Lair and then probably don't ever flip it at Downtown Metroville either. I hope this really helps you improve your gameplay as this character in your next game. But that is it for the guide. Thank you so much for watching. Let's go ahead and drop the beat.